morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Lund of news. Now, I'll keep this pretty short because the video I'm putting up is from Sky News, Raw and Dean, again, extension. And it's about, I think it's Michael Walsh that's written a book on the reset. I've got to be careful of the words I use. I hope we don't get censored. But that's what this video is about. In the meantime, the good news we have, I'll just put it up. London, the news channel has got londonnews.com. So we've got a, our own website that links you to the common law court, links you to videos, links you to everything. And if anybody out there wants to make a donation, because I have an old age pensioner after all, uh, if you've got any equipment, microphones, lights you want to donate, or a few dollars into the kitty, it's on the website to, to get some gear because uh, you know everything I've got is getting pretty, like myself, pretty poor out. <laughs> the bulbs keep going, the lights are old and stuff. Anyway, if you have a few dollars, slick it in. But the main thing is to spread the word because it's it's not... We have very little time left because it's been implemented here in Melbourne. It's going to be called the 20-minute city. Elsewhere, it's a 15-minute city. It means like those movies in time where you couldn't cross from one zone to the other and if you ran out of time, you died and so on and so forth. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen, not which may happen. As Frankston Council meeting last night, it was interesting. They have four new zones coming up there, but they don't tell you what they're really for. And of course, we've got to be careful what we say on these channels. So have a look at this video and make up your own decision. But if you if you want to contribute, please do, because we're going to need to keep producing videos and and, and informing people that way. Anyway, without further ado, let's hip across, pop across to Sky News. We thank Ron Dean for his effort. It's fantastic and Michael Walsh in, in Ireland. Bye for now. And a little PS, ups, a little clip from Kate Hopkins. I'll put this up just after I stop yakking, watch this, and then watch you, uh, yeah, Sky News clip from Rondi. Bye, guys. Hello, this is Press and PR at Oxford Council. I'm sorry, climate lockdowns? No, that's not what we passed. It's a, hold on, traffic filter system. Yes, that's right. No, no, no. There won't be any physical barriers. We're not putting bollards in roads. It's not the bloody, you know, Cold War. No, there'll just be um, e-gates, electronic gates all over the city and uh, vehicle license plate recognition. Maybe we can have some facial recognition software later. So we'll be basically tracking everybody's every move and telling them where they can go. Yes. 15 minutes of their home address. Well, the idea is that people will have everything they need within 15 minutes of their home address, so they won't really need to go anywhere, will they? It'll be like lockdown with COVID. You don't really need to go out. You just stay in your pyjamas all day like we do at the council. Forcing people, no, not forcing anyone. Basically, if you want to leave your home address and drive somewhere, you have to go on the route we permit you to. We have to have your vehicle license plate and we'll make you go through e-gates. And if you do it more times than we say you can, which I think is about 100 times a year, we're going to fine you. Yeah. And if you accidentally go through an e-gate, yeah, we're going to fine you as well. And if you need to see your mum quickly, yeah, yeah, we're going to fine you. Arbitrary rules. No, no, no. These have been well planned out from 2015. We're bringing them in little by little so that people don't notice. And any criticism of us, yes, we're going to report that as abuse to the police and talk about conspiracy theorists. Yes. Our next guest is described as a ridiculously accomplished author, screenwriter and novelist. I'm jealous. His name is Michael Walsh. And he's the author of Against the Great Reset, a timely, certainly timely and necessary book where Michael Walsh has gathered critical perspective on the Great Reset. You've heard us discuss it here many times from 18 writers and journalists from around the world. Michael joins us now. Michael, great to see you. Thanks for coming on the show. Uh, let's just kick off for, for those who aren't really aware of it. What exactly is the Great Reset and who is behind it? Oh, the Great Reset, you don't have to take my word for it. You can take their word for it. <clears throat> you go on the uh, weforum.com, I believe is their website. That is the World Economic Forum based in Switzerland. And there you can read all about the Great Reset, which effectively can be summed up in their own phrase. Remember, this is not some crazed right-wing conspiracy theory. We're just quoting them, as the libs of TikTok do, you know, occasionally. <laughs> it's got them banned on Twitter. Uh, we've just quoted them in their own words, which is, you will own nothing and be happy. So if you guys think that's a great idea, <laughs> sign right on to the Great Reset. But we've come at it from 18 different directions. 
And we hope we've put a big hole in it right now. And we hope that this book will be widely available across the world. Uh, it will be going out to politicians and influential people in all of the Anglophonic countries that people need to be aware of what exactly this neo-fascist consortium of business leaders and government uh, has in store for us. So who funds the World Economic Forum? Where does their power come from? The media. I mean, that's the short answer. It's, uh, uh, it's been blown up because the media is in love with power, as you guys know from your experience in Australia. I see it here in the States. I'm about to go home to Ireland at the end of the week. I'll see it there as well. I'll see it in Central Europe when I'm in Germany throughout most of January. Uh, there has been a movement away from individuality and freedom towards do it because it's good for you or else. And so yes. mm -hmm. you have, uh, un under Klaus Schwab, who is uh, in real life a Bond villain, but in, in private <laughs> life is, is uh, the head of the WEF, under him, it has become extremely influential. And uh, if we're, you know, I lost my tinfoil hat somewhere along the line during the COVID lockdowns, unfortunately. But you can note that uh, King Charles III, or as we like to call him, King Charles of the House of Saxe Coburg und Gotha, because <laughs> they changed the name during the war. Don't mention it, please. Um, and, and the other Germans who currently run Europe, including the Belgian Germans, the German Germans, the English Germans, and everybody else, uh, they, they are on board with this notion that they know better than you do, and by God, you're going to learn to like it. So if you like that, if, any, if there are any crocodile dundees left in Australia, uh, <laughs> now's, the time, now's the time to hear from you because they are going to force this down your throat. Yeah, well, it's Napoleon, I think, who said, I'd rather have an army of sheep led by a lion than an army of lions led by a sheep. And unfortunately, uh, sheep aren't very good at leadership, but they're great at following. Uh, as I know every day in Ireland, when I'm driving down the road, suddenly there's an entire flock of sheep in the middle of the street. Uh, and then they dutifully follow their shepherd uh, into a nearby pasture. Uh, there's a desire to be controlled, to be, to be ordered about uh, in the exchange of safety, of liberty for safety. So with the Great Reset, you have this structure that will be imposed and has been imposed. COVID was just the warning shot. Uh, they mean to make this a permanent thing. And they're they going to use the climate to, to do that. Oh, well, you know, the climate's the next thing. That was the warm-up for the climate. Uh, in the uh, Against the Great Reset, we have a lovely essay by John Tierney, formerly of the New York Times, uh, who, James, I think you probably have met at some point. Uh, Absolutely. Who uh, take, takes apart the COVID-19 hysteria and calls it by its name. Now, as you know, we were all banned from saying that. And I just got back on Twitter three days ago after <laughs> being an early bannee. They kicked me off before they kicked off Donald Trump. So I think that's a pretty, pretty credible thing to uh, my account. <laughs> We've got to face the fact that people aren't going to fight this. They, they, they like to be led. And so what, what George Bush said, the disgraceful George Bush, the second one, the first one was even more disgraceful, but we'll leave that for <laughs> <laughs> the second George Bush who said that the whole freedom speech that uh, I forget some Canadian wrote for him I think uh, what was his name again I'll bill uh, that inside the human every everybody desires to be free is not true not true not true and history proves it over and over and over and over again uh, the, the the Brits put Napoleon on Elba the, the powers in Europe did uh, he got out 15 minutes later, landed on France where he was a wanted man, and immediately the French followed him right back all the way to Waterloo. So leadership is a terribly, terribly important thing. And where that segues me into a subject that I think is interesting to Australia too. We're in a leadership crisis here in the United States. Yep. Uh, we're, we're seeing the passage of the baton from Donald Trump to uh, a man I had met at lunch with a couple of years back, who I think is the first real leader I've seen in American politics uh, since Reagan, but in a way much more effective, and that's Ron DeSantis, mm. who will be the, the nominee uh, of the Republican Party. So we, we're, we're going to see what real leadership can do versus 
Uh, what's the name of the, the president of the United States and Atlas Shrugged? Mr. Somebody. He's just a figurehead non-entity. <laughs> oh, like the current figurehead non-entity that we actually have. Um, but, but he is run by, a, through Conquest's third, third law of politics, is assume the actions of any institution are uh, because it's controlled by a cabal of its enemies. So the United <laughs> States government is controlled by a cabal of its enemies, and we'll see if someone like Santos can stand up to but it won't be Trump. Uh, now, let me ask you, uh, Michael, with the Great Reset, so people do kind of get confused. Uh, you mentioned conspiracy theories and so on. But we actually had a New South Wales health minister who when asked at one point during uh, COVID how long the lockdowns would go on or the restrictions would last. Her answer mm. off the cuff was, well, that depends, that depends on the new world order which was a mm-hmm. strange thing to say and as a clip that I played many times. Maybe it was just a slip of the tongue to give her the benefit of the doubt. But what does this, you know, you mentioned uh, COVID was just the warm-up act. Uh, James mentioned earlier in the show the 15-minute Oxfordshire Ca- uh, County Council restricting movement to 15-minute cities so that people can only stay within 15 minutes of their home. This is actually policy being implemented in Oxford uh, by a local council in the name of climate change. What can we expect to see, do you think, from what you've read about in the next couple of years? Well, it, it, I like to say uh, the thing about the left is they never stop, they never quit, they never sleep. They just continue to push. So COVID was beaten back finally through sheer exhaustion and innervation of the public from being bossed around. But just this afternoon, I went up to my little uh, grocery store here in rural New England, and about half the people were wearing masks again. And I like to greet them. I like, I like to greet them and say, guys, you missed Halloween. It was about you know, a month ago. But uh, they, they, they don't think it's funny because we have our parents here in New England that they are totally serious about this sort of thing. But this is just the beginning. I, the, the reason we wrote this book, and it has so many different subjects, it's not just about Schwab and his evil, you know, Bond villain, Minions. It's about politics and socialism and communism. It's about the arts. I contributed the last essay to it on that particular subject. It's about transportation. It's about green energy. It's it's uh, about all of these ancillary things for which the Great Reset uh, is devoted to uh, controlling everything. You, so for cars, electric cars, mm. uh, you must buy an electric car. Great. I'll plug it in. Don't plug it in. We don't have an electricity. Oh, okay. Yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm about to go to Berlin. Uh, I spent, this. James knows, uh, I spent six years there during the Cold War between 85 and 91, during which time I got the front row seat for the fall of the Berlin Wall, which is a piece of it is right here in my office. Uh, I was in Russia when Chernobyl blew up. I was, I left the Soviet Union two weeks before the coup against Gorbachev. I'm having an acid flashback to communism, guys. And let me tell you, it was easier to move around under communism than it is now in what this reset is, is going to do for you because they will enforce it in a way that uh, is going to be more effective. The one thing about communist societies, this is a little tip for you kids out there who want to become famous foreign correspondents, they're always bribable. You can always <laughs> get what you want. With, with the, the, word, the word in Russian is valuta. Is, if you had valuta, which was American dollars, uh, you could get anything you wanted, and anything could be done. Uh, I think under the new form of fascism, the money is not important to Schwab and to the King of England and to uh, numerous other members of the World Economic Forum. And you can see their videos on the WEF yeah, website, so don't that's true. for me, go, go see it. Uh, it's going to be much harder to play in the interstices there. Uh, so. I'll see you. I'll be in my farm in Ireland. Nice, quiet, peaceful, no visible neighbors. Uh, sayonara. But the uh, rest of us <laughs> be in trouble. Oh, fantastic. Michael Walsh, brilliant to have you on the show here on Outsiders. Thanks so much for your book, Against the Great Reset. Uh, must read. for, uh, And we'll all be over joining you on your farm. James is going to take us all over there with a large uh, scotch when we get there. Thank you.